scraping the bottom of the political barrel. I get a feeling not so much. No, we're not even close. <laughs> political analyst Wendy Patrick and Laura Fink join us with more. Ladies, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. So let's talk about this first. Yesterday, Hillary delivered a very aggressive speech. I'm sure you were listening, calling Trump a vessel for hate. Uh, a champion of conspiracy theories, a uh, representative of the, of the far right fringe of the Republican Party. Have we crossed into new territory uh, with all of this new name calling? I'll let you start, Laura. I don't think that we've crossed anywhere. What, what we saw yesterday was Hillary Clinton doing what she did on foreign policy, where she used Trump's own words to paint a picture. And in fact, I really don't think that we've seen this level of racial appeal, mm. uh, where you're re retweeting folks that have names on Twitter, like White Genocide, where you are, you're using content from white supremacist website. And I think the, the most damning thing is that he did not disavow uh, David David Duke, the, head, the former head of the KKK's endorsement of him, and he didn't do it right before a whole bunch of Republican primaries in the South. This is an entire campaign that has built, been built on racial resentment uh, using words that even Paul Ryan calls a textbook example of racist statements. So, so this is a cha the challenge that Donald Trump has is that he needs to pivot. Well, Hillary Clinton is reminding us where we have been in the past year. Uh, okay. let, Wendy, let, me add, let me add to that from sort of the, the other perspective. The other perspective would be that Donald Trump was caught terribly off guard earlier in the campaign and said some very regrettable things that, he, that have now really come back to haunt him. The David Duke is just one of many. Um, but remember, this speech was very vehement on Hillary Clinton's part, but he called her a bigot. The, yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, he, he was very clear in his attack on her, so she's counterpunching. <laughs> you know, I mean, she can counterpunch with the best of them, and that's what we're seeing play out here is on both sides. They're really going after sometimes the same kind of voters, but also he's really trying to dig himself out of the hole that he, um, <laughs> that he dug for himself early on in the campaign. Now he can't take any of those unfortunate statements back, sure. but he can go on from here. What we've seen in the last week is a new Donald Trump. Trump. We've seen teleprompter Trump. Now, I'm willing to bet that the word bigot wasn't in his teleprompter <laughs> yeah. when he used that to refer to Hillary Clinton. So we already know he's going a little bit off script, but he's kind of a hybrid now. He's more yeah. presidential in his demeanor and his statements. He's regretting some of the things that he said. He's gotten to my bad so far, not I'm sorry, but he's getting there. <laughs> so it remains to be seen if Hillary's very vehement and, and justifiable attacks on him are going to make a difference for her in the polls. With, with the new team and all the changes, I mean, I mean, come on, we're, all, we're, we're a little over two months before Election Day, so I don't know how many more of these changes we get. Clinton, by the way, calling the Trump movement, this is the term, this was taking over the internet yesterday, this alt-right, alt-right, uh -huh. calling him misogynistic, well, anti-Semitic, racist. Well, I mean, I, is she reframing Trump? Is there anything here that the, the people who are against Trump didn't already say about him? Well, here's the challenge that, that, that with, when, and you tied it together so nicely, Raul, he hired Steve Bannon, who affiliates, who is openly affiliates with this alt-right movement, which before they, they uh, uh, branded themselves with that politically correct term, yeah. it's really another name for white nationalism, which is in, and this particular skein of voters that, 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 that Steve Bannon openly affiliates with are, they, they traffic in sexism and they openly traffic in what they call call white nationalism what most of America calls racism. So, so the problem is this affiliation uh, with this particular f brand that, frankly, most Republicans would like to distance themselves from. Um, so, so this is the problem with the Trump campaign, that they have ridden this horse uh, past the primaries and, and into this race, um, and, and now Hillary Clinton is pointing it out that it, it's still there and you can't run away from it. Well, do we see this name calling even working with voters? I mean, you call someone a bigot, you call someone a racist or all these different things. And, and do you, is it speak any truth or do you just keep saying something and hoping that people are just going to believe one way or another? Uh, do we see this kind of work for voters to actually believe this kind of stuff? Well, I think the answer is a little of both. I mean, you either think Donald Trump's a racist or you don't. Same thing with Hillary Clinton regarding her trustworthiness, the temperament issues. You know, th there's so much that goes into the, the profile of a candidate. You're not necessarily going to decide not to vote for somebody because somebody is name calling on the air. There's so much more than that. And there's so much more than that to the typical voter. Now it's true, viewers are voters and we have people that are following these races very closely. But in terms of uh, labels and names, it just isn't going to matter that much because 
Americans are more concerned about jobs, about mm -hmm. education for their kids, about taxes, right. about national security. These are the things that concern them far more than what Hillary and Donald are calling each other on well, the latest Well, we wish they the would talk show. about those things. But isn't that what we say about every election, Laura? Well, uh, you know, I, I agree and disagree with Wendy. In a normal election, the, the, the fact that those still rank at the top of the polls for what voters care about, but what they're influenced by are other things. This is a very unique election in which temperament is being examined and in which, uh, which you know, we are examining whether or not certain people are even fit to be president. So it's a very different dynamic in this election cycle. And as you can see, we are not talking about issues. We're not, ro we're, we're not talking about the jobs plan uh, that, that Hillary rolled out or Donald Trump's tax plan as much as we are talking about all of these other things that frankly Donald Trump's campaign has brought to the fore. So it is a very different type of campaign, uh, but one where we're really evaluating on a very basic level whether someone should sit in the Oval Office. And because that's true, Donald Trump's pivot, and he doesn't want to call it that, he doesn't want to admit that he's done it, but he has. His pivot demeanor-wise in the last week, I believe is going to significantly help him in the polls. Really? For the very first time, and you can call me on this in a couple of months if I'm wrong, but for the very first <laughs> oh, time. Oh, we will. Okay, no, I know. We have seen a more presidential, a more tempered. Sure, it's lower energy, to use his own words, but that's a good thing when it comes to somebody like Donald Trump that was his own worst enemy in yeah. the primary, or I should say more so in the beginning of the general election. So now that he is staying on script, he's dealing with the issues, he has toned down some of the fire. Somebody obviously took his phone away from him because we're not seeing those divisive tweets anymore. He could definitely turn this thing around but he's got to start now. Yeah, well, you, mentioned, you mentioned the polls there. I want to talk about the Quinnipiac University. Clinton has a 10-point lead. We talked, I believe, earlier in the week about these people who are not going to tell the, the, the pollsters right. that we are going to vote for Trump or we're not going to vote. So there's that. But 10-point lead, uh, that's pretty significant. Does that mean it's kind of heading towards a landslide? That's what people are talking about. I find it hard I, to believe it's that wide a margin, and I, Laura can weigh in as well. But, I mean, that that sounds like well, a, a pretty Well, Quinnipiac's pretty margin. legit. I mean, that's a legit poll. Well, and, and to Wendy's point, I agree with her. I think these numbers may not be perfect, but I do think with the momentum you see is on Hillary Clinton's side. Uh, but I wanted to speak to two points that I think tie into your point, Raul, but also to Wendy's. Uh, and, and the first is uh, that every time... Donald Trump pivots, uh, it, there's a believability factor. Is he able to persuade after a full year of campaigning to the contrary? Then my second point is that Donald Trump's base expects red meat, build a wall, inflame tensions, this sort of intense rhetoric right. that they've come, then he's counting on that inspiring voters that never come to vote to vote for him. Now, when he turns down the volume on that rhetoric for however many days, 80 some days we have left between now and the election, mm -hmm. is that gonna tamper down that vote? He is between a rock and a hard place. One, the believability. Two, will his voters continue to be, in, who were inspired by his anger, continue to be so. So, so he's in real trouble here, uh, but by no means is any election over till election okay, day. Okay, quickly, I'm, I'm so bummed out. We're, at, we're almost out of time. I want to get quick thoughts from both of you. This WikiLeaks dump that is coming out soon. Should Hillary be worried? Wendy, quickly, please. Yes, I mean, the October surprise promised by Julian Assange. I mean, this man is despicable, but credible. We know that because of the, the fallout of the, uh, the WikiLeaks dump that happened right before the DNC, right. which caused the resignation of five top Democratic officials, including Deb Debbie Wasserman mm -hmm. Schultz. So yes, she should be worried. How worried is it going to make a big difference? It didn't make that big of a difference before the DNC convention, even though um, it did yeah. reflect somewhat on her campaign. I wonder if Laura's worried. Well, Ju everybody has to be worried right up until Election Day. Sure. I don't think Julian Assange changed that. Even if he didn't have some information, there are, you know, Donald Trump might have something in his back pocket. Every candidate has to be prepared all the way until Election Day. There you go. Hey, it's Friday. It's the yeah. weekend. Hey. <laughs> it's going to be nice weather. Let's get out and enjoy it, and then we'll get back at Ladies, it next thank week. thank you. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Raul. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, man. It's uh, August 26th, which means Election Day is about two and a half months It's away. only going to get more heated. Wow. Man, it's a long campaign, it's Russo. Very oh, long, man. very long. Morning weather, powered by Jerome's what? Dream Shop. Like I think you're the only one. I think you're the only one saying that in yeah. America.